What's up, guys? It's Alex here, and welcome to the next game of the 2020 NCAA tournament being played on NCAA Basketball 10. We are simulating every single game. Up next, we have 5 seed Butler versus number 12 seed Texas. I had Texas beating, I think it was Richmond, in the first four, which is why I have them here in this game. It, this team or this game in real life would have been absolutely crazy to see in the first round of the tournament back in 2009 2010. Texas is an A all around, but Butler is a B plus all around with Gordon Hayward, Shelvin Mack, Matt Howard. I used them to go through and win the NCAA tournament last year is just like a play thing, but I thought that was really fun to do. This game should be great. Let's get into it. You guys see Boston University upset Dayton 16 over 1 earlier. There's Shelvin Mack, Matt Howard, Gordon Hayward, Andrew Smith. Both, team is, both teams are looking to stop the penetration. Both teams are looking to score in transition. Number 5 Butler, number 12 Texas. Let's Kick it off, or tick it, tip it off. I picked the wrong sport, LOL. The Looking down low already and drawing the foul. Getting the and one as well. Brad Stevens is not happy for Butler already. Giving up an and one, not even 10 seconds into the ball game. This is the closest that Syracuse fans are going to get to the NCAA tournament. Texas bringing the pressure in the backcourt. Let's see how Butler responds. Oh, that's a flop by number five. Gordon Hayward is wide open for three over there. I think there's somebody really good on Texas, but I can't remember what their name is. Butler is able to respond, though. They get some points on the board. And Butler fouls again. Chris Carson, a.k.a. Gordon Hayward, fouls Texas. I literally cannot remember who was good on Texas back then. Gordon Hayward is not getting subbed out, though. They know how important he is to that team. And Texas takes the 5-2 to lead. And Texas gets the steal. Passing down low again, and the shot rims out, though. They're not able to capitalize off that steal. Let's see how Shelvin Mack and Butler react. Gordon Hayward for three, knocking it down 5-5 five to five now. Whenever I was playing with Butler last year, I could not hit any three-pointers with Gordon Hayward for some reason, so of course he makes his first one here in the simulation. Butler is trapping Texas in the backcourt. They almost turn it over with the 10-second violation. Where were those Texas players going? I was about to say, I, I was like, I didn't think most of the players were there. And they turn it over anyway. Butler is pushing the ball up the floor in transition. And they get the foul. Derek Gallery getting the foul. A computer science major. Knock down the first one. Butler takes the 6-5 to five lead. But he misses the second one. Texas corrals the rebound. Texas for three, does not connect. Butler pushing the ball up the floor in transition. That was one of their keys before the game. Looking down low. Andrew Smith lining up, and it's in and out, rims out. 
I can't remember who was the coach of Texas at this time. I want to say it was Rick Barnes. He is not too happy with what Texas is doing right now. He wants to get some more points on the board here. He, he knows their potential. And they turn the ball over. Rick Barnes is not happy at all. They aren't driving and kicking enough, according to him. Let's see how Butler responds after getting the steal. Moving the ball around. Passing down low to Gordon Hayward, who draws the foul. Both teams are fouling like crazy this game for some reason. Another computer science major for Gordon Hayward. Looks like the entire Butler team is majoring in computer science. And Butler gets the second one to fall. Eight to five now, Butler leading the game. Texas has not scored in the last two minutes. They had a hot start, but haven't been able to do anything since. They almost turned the ball over again. They shoot the fadeaway, get the offensive rebound, a weird post move, but it ends up working. They now bring it to within one with two minutes to go in the first half. Ooh, that was almost out of bounds. I'm not sure why they didn't call out of bounds. But another foul gets called. This one on Devon Brooks or Devin Brooks, however you want to pronounce that one. And the entire team is not full of computer science majors. We have a humanities major here, number five. Whooshing it right there. And now 10 to seven in favor of Butler. Let's see if Texas can even tie it up here. Brad Stevens is proud of his team. They're doing a great job of going inside. Nine free throws already in this game. This one could turn out to be a hackish hackathon, whatever you want to call it. Texas's power forward or center is working down low, but they shoot the three and set and do not get it. Rick Barnes is okay with that possession, though. He says those shots will fall eventually. Moving the ball around. Gordon Hayward has it at the top of the key right now. He wants to take that guy, but he passes out of it. Shelvin Mack for three. Does not get it to go. Under a minute to go in the ball game now. Texas has taken the entire shot clock, and they do not get it to go. Now Rick Barnes is getting unhappy with his team. Now those shots aren't falling, and he's getting kind of mad. Working the pick and roll for Butler, and it works a little bit of contact there, but it doesn't matter. Butler is now on a 10-2 run, as you can see right there. They are trapping Texas in the backcourt, 12-7 in favor of Butler. And I have Butler making the Elite Eight in my bracket. But my bracket doesn't even matter to, no matter now, though. I already have two teams out of the Final Four. And we're not even done with the first round yet. I had Michigan State making the national championship game. And, of course, they end up getting upset by a 14 seed in the last video. So I just spoiled it, I realize, if you guys haven't seen that one. Gordon Hayward's going to take a fadeaway shot at the free throw line, at the buzzer. And he gets it to go. Butler is now up 14 to 7 at the break. Bit of a difference difference in field goal percentage right there. Butler is shooting 67%. Texas is shooting 29%. Both teams not really doing a good job of defense. I guess the best things right there are the stop penetration points. And I guess Butler's been doing a good job of keeping Devon Brooks in check. I can't, I'm going to, if Texas end, ends up winning this game and I have to switch to our rosters in the Elite Eight, we'll kind of see what happens, but it might not even matter. Passing down low to number five. 
12 to 2 run so far for Butler. Thought they might be able to extend it right there, but they do not. Texas working the pick and roll, driving, and profiling. They get the layup to go. 14 to 9 now in favor of Butler. Looking down low to Matt Howard. Matt Howard at this first shot of the game does not fall. Brad Stevens is not happy, saying they're doing a horrible job with the ball reversals. Texas now can bring it to within one possession if they make the shot here. Working the pick and roll behind the back, pulling up from the free throw line. They get it to go with four minutes to go in the ball game. Texas Tech, or not Texas Tech, Texas is getting back into this ball game. 14 to 11 now, but Texas is slamming the floor. They want to get a stop on this possession. They are not going to let Butler score. Now Butler's working the pick and roll. They trap Gordon Hayward at the top of the key, shoving Mack for three, and he misses. Texas now with a ton of momentum. Brad Stevens is not happy at all. Oh, and he goes behind the back in transition, but he can't finish. Man, that would have gotten Texas fans hyped everywhere. I mean, it almost got me hyped right there. Butler now can it take or can extend the lead to double or to a two-possession game, but they do not. Texas gets another defensive stop. They are now moving the ball in transition. Butler has not scored here in the second half. They could tie it if they shoot a three and make it here, but they're going to pass it down low. Working on Gordon Hayward, and Gordon Hayward gets a stop and the rebound. And he also has seven points this game. He might end up with double digits. Three minutes to go in the ball game. Butler has not scored in two minutes. Shelvin Mack pulling up, fading away. A horrible shot. Does not fall, though. Texas now is trying to get back into this ball game. They can tie it up with a three. Number five here is working on Matt Howard. He's bringing Matt Howard out to the three-point line. Working down low to number 34 who fires and gets it to go. We have a one-point game with two minutes and 30 seconds left to go. Butler is up 14 to 13 over Texas. Butler has not scored at all here in the second half. Let's see if that can change that here. Now they're using the pick and roll. Looking down low to Andrew Smith. He's probably going to fade away. Nope, he does a post move and gets it to go. Butler gets their first points here of the second half. They now take the three-point lead with 2.12 to go. Brad Stevens is happy right there. And then Texas fouls. Or no, I think Butler fouls uh, Texas right there. Devin Brooks has four points and six rebounds, though. He's been having a great game. Let's see if he can lead his team to victory. Working in the post for Texas, but it does not connect. Butler gets the stop here. Passing out in transition to Gordon Hayward. A minute 43 left to go. It's still a one-possession game. Oh, they Texas almost gets the steal, but Shelvin Mack rises up and knocks it down. Butler now takes a five or a five-point lead, not a five-possession lead. Texas's progress. And at the beginning of the second half is almost completely wiped out now. It was a seven-point game at the half. Texas brought it to within one, but now Butler is starting to respond. 115 left to go in the ball game. They work it around the perimeter. On the shot clock. Almost no foul called on Texas here. They rise up. They will take advantage of the man flopping. They bring it to within three points. One minute to go. This game is getting good. Will we have our first overtime game of the 2020 NCAA tournament? Texas working the ball around. Shelvin Mack for three. Does not connect. Texas now with the ball. 40 seconds left. They can either bring it to within one or tie it up with a three. They like throw an alley-oop or something there. But no, con uh, they, there's a lot of contact there. No foul is called. I don't know why Texas isn't fouling right now because the shot clock is turned off. 25 seconds to go. What is Texas doing right now? Okay, there they go. Now they're fouling. I'll pick it up when we get to the one and ones So this one will put them in the bonus. As you can see, a lot of time has come off the clock, though, and even more time is going to come off. Texas has been taking a long time to foul Butler here, and now Shelvin Mack is going to the line with a chance to make this a two-position game. 
16.2 seconds left. And he makes the first one. That one was critical for Butler fans. What is Andrew Smith doing? He was standing in the center of the paint. But he misses the second. Texas takes the rebound. It is a four-point game. We will pick it up when we get out of the timeout. Texas here needs to score if they want to have a chance to win this ball game. A three is preferable, but a two is points on the board. Texas fadeaway three does not fall. Butler's just going to let that one roll out of bounds. This game looks like it's over, and they are subbing out everybody. There goes Shelvin Mack and Gordon Hayward. They know this one is over. And Texas is just fouling to extend the ball game at this point. Butler fans are chanting to warm up the bus. Warm up the bus. Warm up the bus. Warm up the bus. And he knocks down the first one. 20 to 15 in favor of Butler. Sam Franklin gets his first points of the ball game. But he misses the second. 20 to 15. Texas calls a timeout. It's not going to matter. But maybe they can bring it to within a one position or one possession game on the final stat line. Four, three, two. He's gonna get the easy layup. Twenty to seventeen. Don't foul. They try to foul, but it's not gonna matter. Butler is gonna walk out of here with the W. Twenty to seventeen. Gordon Hayward, Shelvin Mack. Matt Howard, they have a chance to continue their run and maybe recreate history by winning the national championship game. Or re rewriting history, I should say. <laughs> so there we go. Number five, Butler beats number 12, Texas, to move on to the round of 32. They will play the winner of Maryland and Akron. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you all in the next game.